And now um, I'm going to introduce, we're so delighted and proud to have Mayor Ed Lee again with us to really open this with his vision and guide us through some of the things that are top of mind for him as he views some of the challenges and opportunities ahead of us. And as we know, housing, housing, housing is really important to this mayor. And he's going to take us on a tour of, of what he's seeing in housing and um, and uh, some of the things that are necessary to get there. Give us some I'm just going to let you come up here. I don't need to talk for you. Mayor Ed Lee, thank you so much for being with us this morning. I don't read headlines either. Uh, thank you, Mary. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Shepard Mullins, and thank you to the San Francisco Business Times again for this invitation to talk with you for a while about what we're doing in the city. Uh, I can't believe it's been a year already. Uh, it's gone by pretty fast, uh, but a lot of things have happened and uh, there is both headlines, but also there's a lot of substance going on in our city. Uh, I, I want to, and I see David Chu and Senator Weiner and Katie Tang and others who are working really hard with me. Uh, as I said yesterday when we uh, were announcing uh, a directive for our departments, I, uh, in years past, I, uh, I really declined every invitation to go up to Sacramento. Uh, the reputation was nothing got done up there and I went up there about six times to try to get some added protections and was not able to do that for our residents. But something has happened uh, in the past, I think, year, year and a half, particularly with uh, Scott and David's uh, leadership up there and the governor's sitting on no less than 15 bills today, uh, hopefully by this week or very soon that uh, we anticipate uh, a lot more resources and a lot more process improvements uh, that really are from the state to help us in our city with the housing crisis. But let me begin with obviously some good news. I, I, I never uh, want to shy away from what is good that's happening in our city because ultimately it comes down to a very basic principle is that people need a lot of help. There's a lot of needs out there, but if you're not a strong city, you can't really help anybody. And so uh, as, as many of you know, my, my first term was spent uh, making sure that we had the good jobs, good paying jobs for San Francisco residents and for the Bay Area. And uh, we believe that that has been the reason why we're successful in so many other areas. Our unemployment rate uh, this past August was again stood at three and a half percent, the third lowest in California. Our job base grew by 25 percent in the last six years and we've added over 143,000 new jobs. In fact, today we have more jobs than ever in our city's history. But we do have problems and we do have challenges and I know Mary has already named a few of those. Sounds like uh, uh, one of our local reporters all the time emphasizing congestion. Some of the other challenges that we have and we're working on those as well. But one of the things that I believe that we can make, make sure that we have a great foundation and progress on is something that uh, I believe there's a very strong unity at our Board of Supervisors doing. That's to really meet head on our housing crisis. We have underbuilt in our city for so many decades and we don't have the housing that we need to accommodate all of the people that we need to have here that want to be here. And so I remain laser focused on housing and I will do so really to the remaining days of my administration because I spent my first term working on those jobs and building a strong economy, working with our labor partners to make sure that there was a belief you can get a good job in San Francisco and we're looking forward to all of the innovations that are going on so that we can really plan for the future. We're investing in our kids. Our middle schools are doing better than ever before. Our schools continue to be the best performing urban school district in the entire state because we're making the right investments. So now I gotta make sure that workforces, whether they be tech, bio life sciences, healthcare, 911 dispatchers, firefighters, police officers, teachers, all 
of the essential people that we want to be in our city can afford to be here and have a place to be here. So I'm focused on that housing supply. I'm focused on, of course, preserving what housing that we have, and I'll go into detail about that, but making sure that as much of our supply is as affordable as ever, and I'm focused on working with the whole region. In fact, yesterday, uh, Mayor Schaff and I and uh, Mayor Licardo joined uh, labor leaders, environmentalists, uh, city councils and supervisor leaders throughout the entire peninsula and Bay Area to begin the very difficult discussion of a regional approach to this challenge of housing. And one of the main tenets of that meeting was that we can't just nibble around the edges in housing. We really have to do something dramatic when people are faced with paying over 50% of their income just to afford housing. We've got to do something proportionately major. In 2014, I challenged our city to produce 30,000 new and rehabilitated units by 2020. Well, we are in fact on track to perform that as of today. In fact, we're gonna exceed that because of the great work that our supervisors are doing with our office, with our mayor's office of housing. But in this group in particular, I wanna begin by saying a big thanks to our private developers for continuing to have faith in our city. Three and a half years into that pledge from 2014, we've opened over 17,000 new homes in San Francisco. In this past year, we enjoyed the debate in the great San Francisco tradition about how much affordable housing you, private developers, and our development community partners would be responsible for producing. As many of you know, I insisted that this discussion be grounded in solid economic analysis so that we could ask developers to do everything possible to help increase our housing stock. Possible, not impossible. So with the help of the Board of Supervisors, President London Breed, Supervisor Asa Safai, and of course the support of uh, Supervisors Katie Tang and so many others, we kept the discussion on track we grounded it in the feasibility study that was led by our city controller, Ben Rosenfield. So I'm happy to report that this past July 27th, I signed legislation that brings about the largest overhaul of inclusionary housing requirements in our city's history since it began in 2002. Most significantly, we are for the first time ever asking developers in a very economically feasible way to help us provide not only the housing for the lowest income San Franciscans, but also to help us with the needs of middle income residents who are finding it increasingly hard to stay in our city. This is a theme that you hear from me quite often for the next two and a half years. We must continue to make sure there's room for our teachers first responders, our janitors, our transport drivers, all of those who live and work and build, the, and build their homes in the city. We can't ask them, I can't afford to have essential work people take two hours of their lives every morning and every evening on the freeways, on the BART tubes, backed up in order to show up for work. And our critical services, even by nonprofits, I don't want them to be suffering in transportation as well, because they're critical to us. We are moving forward with approvals on as many exciting residential developments from market rate to affordable housing. So this is where the slide coordination begins. Last year I uh, spoke here about the promise of our southern waterfront continues to be really exciting. It's an entire transformation of a formerly heavy industrial waterfront into a place where tens of thousands of people can live and work. And many of you, including Five Point and so many others, are just working with us very closely to make sure that happens. I spoke about those projects that reflect our values. And by the end of this year, we will approve 
two key southern bayfront projects on land owned by the Port of San Francisco, Pier 70, and Mission Rock. Since 2011, the Port and Forest City have been collaborating on a vision up along the fenced off portion of the bayfront in the dog patch area. Six years later, Pier 70 project has cleared the voters and the Planning Commission and is poised for a final approval this fall. Once built, it'll be active, mixed-use neighborhoods with over 1,500 or more units of housing. 30% of those units will be affordable. One to two million square feet of office space, nine acres of parks, rehabilitated historic buildings, and a suite of public benefits including transportation improvements, a robust workforce training programs that uh, aligned with our labor unions work, on-site art uses, and funding for a new community center. Mission Rock. Mission Rock will transform 17 acres of surface parking that exists today to complete a neighborhood with up to 1,950 residential units, of which 40% will be affordable. Got to study how that got done, but you know behind it, we got the Giants, and they're still winners, whether the season goes good or not. Also, eight acres of expanded parks and promenades, a robust workforce development there as well, sustainable agreements, adaptation to future sea level rise, and a rehabilitation of the historic Pier 48. All of this is planned to be built in four phases over the next decade. Mission Rock will complete one of the last major underdeveloped parcels in the Mission Bay neighborhood. Hope SF, something that I have uh, supported throughout my career because it has to do with people who really have a hard time helping themselves. And I know that and I know the equity uh, challenge is as challenging for all of us. Well, Hope SF for Sunnydale and for Petrero Hill projects will revitalize the city's largest and oldest public housing sites. Our redevelopment plans for both sites were unanimously approved this past February, and it will enable some 1,300 families to move into new, clean, and safe housing, access to services, retail, parks, all for the first time. They are not going to be the isolated public housing sites that we've known in our history. Sunnydale and Bachero projects will become mixed income neighborhoods because what I've discovered in working with public housing sites is these old army barracks are surrounded by empty pieces of land that have been neglected. And so we figured out not only to keep the current residents there and help them get into better, cleaner, newer housing, but because we are approaching with our for-profit and non-profit developers, many of them here in the room, we now are going to add some 3,400 new housing units to these sites. Well, all of this includes the replacement of the old public housing sites, additional new income, low-income affordable housing for our, our communities, as well as market rate for sale housing. Both projects have already in, uh, initiated their first phases of construction, and Hope SF, by any standard, is our nation's first large-scale public housing transformation aimed at supporting existing communities uh, without mass displacement of our residents. As you know, two other Hope SF sites, again, because of our relationship with private developers that are sensitive to this, Alice Griffith and Huntersville are already under construction. Well, RAD, Rental Assistance Demonstration Program. In 2013, 
we embarked on a pretty audacious plan to end the chronic despair of some 3,500 public housing units throughout, throughout the entire city. We engaged the residents, the tenants directly, in nearly every city department, all of our affordable housing developers, and they willingly took on this challenge with us. And I'm thrilled to report the success of this RAD program. Our $90 million of city-invested funds has been able to leverage $1.9 billion in permanent debt and equity. And I want to say uh, the Tiffany Bowie, who is here at OCI, I thank you for your leadership uh, in doing this. And I know you've gone on to make a lot more money, but, uh, but you deserve uh, really our thanks for leading this effort and making sure we are on a very strong foundation. We have retained uh, these important affordable units and more importantly, residents are now for first time as long as they can remember they're enjoying safe, decent housing that's essential to the health and stability of them and their families, and quite frankly, of our city. Let's talk about the plumbers union. Everybody needs new plumbing? Well, the plumbers themselves also need new plumbing. 1601 Market Street is a project that will be the first privately owned development in San Francisco to include a mix of new supportive affordable housing for formerly homeless individuals, a workforce affordable housing, and market rate apartments all on the same site. In total, 28% of the 584 units will be affordable on this site. The project is on a little over two acres just west of Market and Van Ness Street. The plan will redevelop the site with a mixed-use program including housing, ground floor retail, a new union hall building for our local 38 friends, and a centerpiece, publicly accessible open space. All designed to meet and in many cases to exceed the guidelines of the Market Octavia plan. The 100 unit supportive affordable housing building on Colton Street, part of this plan, will be developed in a joint venture between, uh, with the Community Housing Partnership, one of our city's leading supportive housing developers and managers. That's the new plumbing plan for San Francisco. Central Soma. The Central Soma plan is expected to be approved early next year. Well, this plan includes at least 7,800 units of new housing. In addition, it will include 9 million square feet of new employment space over a period of time. Our focus on housing doesn't mean that we'll stop thinking about div our diverse economy in San Francisco. It doesn't mean that we'll stop ensuring that nonprofits and small businesses are not priced out of the city. We will continue and will always be a hub for the Bay Area. We'll always have a critical job center. Well, we'll continue to add to our job base in the right place and close to uh, regional transit. We will build more housing and we will provide for more jobs and we'll get that balance right. But I want to talk to you today about the future production of housing. We've done a good job over the past four years building housing, uh, putting the resources out there, helping to stabilize the market, but we need to do more and we need your help. We must also set an aggressive tone for new housing goals to keep our city strong and economically viable. The truth of it is that for the last 30 years, Guess how much housing we built as a city on an annual basis? 1,900 units each year in the last 30 years. No way can that pace accommodate the kind of housing needs that we have. We proved that because in the last three years, we exceeded 17,000 new units. That means 5,000, around 5,000 units per year. 
So yesterday, I signed an executive directive designed to significantly shorten the time it takes for the city and city departments to entitle housing development projects and to grant the necessary permits to get them built. This executive directive will provide the structure for an unprecedented amount of housing production by reducing project approval levels by nearly half of what they currently experience. Those of you who are investors should smile about that. Your money is not held up. This directive will reduce entitlement times, ensure building permits, subdivision mapping, other post entitlement permits, and a better relationship with our utility providers so we're not in months of arguments over things that have already been entitled. It will require an accountability from departments involved in the process. Quite frankly, from departments whose core mission is not housing. Public Works, Public Utilities, MTA, working along and working ahead and working make much earlier with planning and the Department of Building Inspection should be able to account for a faster, speedier process. And while this directive is about the city family working faster and more efficiently, I also need to call upon many of you, that our development partners, to step up as well. Sometimes there are developers who are responsible for delays in getting housing projects. I'm sure it's none of you. But there are times when, you know, it's not appropriate to be presenting curbless sidewalks in floodplain areas of the city. Well, I've got to work on both sides. I got to make sure everybody is on par. It's a joint responsibility, but I'm going to do what I need to do in my house to make it happen. And together, we'll work to create an expedited schedule of all of our housing development approvals. Make sure that our investors are honored, their money is honored, and the housing gets built. Because at the end of the day, we need that housing more than ever. We need to produce 5,000 units every single year for the foreseeable future. And we need to make sure that we can jump 160% increase from what we have experienced in the last 30 years. I know we can do it because the reason, and I think the only significant reason we are able to build 5,000 units each year in the last 30 years is because I set a goal, and the city set a goal to get it done. Well, let's set more goals and make sure 5,000 new units of housing get built. We've seen it happen when our private and public entities come together. We know from experience that working together, we can solve major challenges of our time. And that's why I call for the highest collaboration we can possibly have in the most known crisis that is in front of us, our housing crisis. Let's build, let's build for us, let's build for your families, let's build for the future, let's keep this city going. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Lee. Um, we appreciate you being with us again.